So a manufacturer of car tyres estimates the area of a car tyre in contact with the ground is about the same area as a person's shoe. A car has a weight of about 10,000 newtons, or 1,000 kilograms uh, in mass. A person weighs 500 newtons, or a 50 kilogram mass. Seems quite small for a person, but, but there we go. Calculate the ratio of the pressure of a car on the ground and the pressure of a person on the ground. Remember, a car has four tyres, a person has two feet. So, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the force on each of the uh, tires or feet in each case and since the area is the same that's going to allow us to figure out the ratio of the pressures so we're going to get this factor of 10. So suggest why it might be a good idea to reduce the pressure of the air in car tires if the car is to be driven on soft sand or over snow. Well the idea here is to increase the surface area in contact with the ground so it reduces the pressure acting on the ground and that reduces the risk of sinking. A YouTube manometer is used to measure lung pressure by blowing at A as shown in the diagram. Okay. Before the person blows at A, the liquid levels are the same. State the reason for this. Well, if the levels are the same, that means the pressure on either side must be the same, and it's going to be atmospheric pressure because both sides are open to the atmosphere. Which way do the liquid levels move when the person blows at A? Well, if you blow at A, you're going to increase the pressure at X, so X is going to move down. The pressure at y hasn't changed so you're going to essentially get a pressure forcing the liquid so if x goes down y has to go up because we're not going to change the total volume of the liquid uh, so you, you don't lose any what would you measure in order to find the person's lung pressure well you'd need to know two things you'd need to know what atmospheric pressure was and you'd also need the height difference on both sides and if you can measure those two things you can figure out what the lung pressure is. A farmer has two vehicles with the same weight and the same number of wheels. The diagram shows what the wheels of the two vehicles look like. So basically we've got one which is a lot wider than the other and so it's going to have a lot larger surface area. Which one should the farmer use when driving across fields when the ground is very soft? Give reasons. So uh, for the vehicle we should use vehicle 2 and the reason is it's got a large area but the same weight force so if you have the same force over a larger area that gives you a lower pressure and so a reduced chance of sinking in if you stepped on the point of a sharp nail with your bare foot it would be extremely painful explain in terms of pressure why this is so so what you've got is a that the force is concentrated into a really small area which gives you a very large pressure and a large pressure can cause a lot of damage it'd be more likely to break the skin and that's going to be very painful things that are damaging are correlates to what is painful a person can lie on a bed of nails if there's a large number of nails explain why this is not extremely painful well if you step on one nail that has a very small area that your force acts through but if you have a large number of the nails, the force is distributed between all of the nails or well, we've got a much larger area that gives a smaller pressure from each nail which is going to be less painful okay so in an experiment to find the density of some oil a student takes the following readings the mass of an empty measuring jug 610 mass of a jug containing 500 centimeters cubed of oil 1020 okay calculate the mass of oil well we just need to find the difference between those which is clearly 410 grams calculate the density of the oil so we can see from the jug what the volume is so we're going to divide the mass by the volume that we can see on the jug and that's going to give us a density in grams per centimeter cubed um, 0.82 how could the volume of oil be more accurately measured than with a measuring jug? Well, you can see the measuring jug only has divisions every 100 milliliters or a resolution of 100 centimeters cubed. So we could switch to a measuring cylinder which have a much higher resolution. They can measure to the nearest centimeter cubed, for example.
Water is more dense than oil. Mark approximately where the surface of the same mass of water would be if it were replaced by oil. So the, the thought process I went through here is if water is more dense, the same mass would occupy a smaller volume. And that's how I would mark this position here uh, to give us uh, the answer to this question. The diagram, a sealed drum contains gas has a mercury and a manometer connected to it in order to indicate the gas pressure. Okay, so we can see uh, it's at 781 inside, but only 760 yeah, atmospheric pressure. So for convenience, gas pressure is often expressed in millimeters of mercury. So if we've got these two values, st state the difference in height between the two levels. Well, we can just do a basic subtraction calculation to get 21 millimeters. The temperature of the gas rises. State what happens to the gas pressure. So if you have a higher temperature, the molecules have more energy, they travel faster, so when they collide with the container, that's going to exert a larger pressure. Okay. So if the uh, pressure inside the container rises, the level at A goes down because there's higher pressure above it. And therefore B goes up because we haven't lost any mercury. So if it's gone down on one side, it has to go up on the other. So the air in part A is also pressing on a large window pane in the wall of the room where the drum is situated. State how the air pressure on the window pane compares with the air pressure on the mercury surface at B in the diagram. Well, they're going to be the same because B in the diagram is open to the atmosphere. A window is open to the atmosphere. So they're both going to experience exactly the same pressure. Say how the force exerted by air on a window pane compares with the force exerted by the air on the surface. Well, a window is much has a much larger area. So if you have the same pressure but a much larger area, that gives you a much bigger force. So uh, windows are actually experiencing very large force, but they're experiencing the same force from both sides of the window, which just cancel out and you end up with uh, no resultant force at all. So a packaging company purchases corrugated cardboard boxes in which to pack its goods. The boxes are not made up when they are delivered, but are flat as shown in the diagram. A bundle of these boxes measures, we've got these dimensions, and it has a mass of 7.2. Calculate the volume. Well, it's a cuboid, so we can just multiply the dimensions together. To get the density, we just do mass divided by that. And this time we've got kilograms per meter cubed as the unit for our density. So corrugated cardboard is made of three sheets of thick paper stuck together. And we've got an enlarged view from the diagram. Here is an incomplete sentence. The density of paper is blank that of the corrugated cardboard. Uh, well, the answer is it's going to be greater than. And the reason being is the corrugated cardboard incorporates lots of air which has a much lower density than that of cardboard. So the, the overall density ends up being lower once we turn it into corrugated cardboard. So that's our explanation. Cardboard has a lot of air, which decreases its density. So a mass of three kilograms accelerates at two meters per second squared in a straight line. State why the velocity and the acceleration are both described as vector quantities. So vector quantities have direction as well as magnitude. Calculate the force required to accelerate the mass. So uh, this is what this equation for. So resultant force equals mass times acceleration. So if we, do, if we do mass times acceleration, we get a resultant force of six newtons. Mass hits a wall. The average force exerted on the wall during the impact is 120 newtons. The area of the mass in contact with the wall is 0 0.050 meters squared. Calculate the average pressure. Well, pressure is force divided by area, which is gonna give us a pressure of 2,400 pascals. Okay, so we've got a diagram showing a simple pendulum that swings backwards and forwards between P and Q. The time taken for the pendulum to swing from P to Q is approximately 0.5 seconds. Describe how you determine this time as accurately as possible. So what I'm going to do is to measure the time taken for 10 complete oscillations. A complete oscillation B would be going from P up to Q and then back to P. And then we want the time for half an oscillation because we want to go from P to Q. So we're going to divide that time by 20 
and that would give us our time. But it would give us an accurate value of the time. State the two vertical forces acting on the pendulum when it's at position R. Uh, so the first one to recognize it's got its weight force acting downwards but there's also going to be a tension force upwards which is stopping it falling and keeping it in a circular arc the pendulum bob moves in an arc of a circle say the direction of the resultant of the two forces in one well it must be towards the center of the circle so it's upwards towards the pivot point remember to be in traveling in a circle you need a resultant force towards the center of the circle the mass of the bob is 0.2 kilograms. During the swing, it moves so that P is at 0.05 meters higher than R. Calculate the increase in potential energy of the pendulum bob between R and P. Okay, so change in GP is just mg times the change in height. So it's going to be 0.2, the mass, times the gravitational field strength, 10, times 0.05 meters, giving us 0.1 joules of energy. Okay, so the final question, the diagram shows the arc the arm of a crane when it's lifting a heavy box. So we've got two forces with different magnitudes at different angles. Using a scale diagram, not by calculation, find the weight of the box. So what we're going to do is draw a diagram showing the vector addition of these two forces. So let's do that. So I'm going to use the scale that one centimetre is 100 newtons. And when I did this, I found the resultant of these two was uh, 1750. So let's see how that happened. So here is the first one and here is the second one. So I've arranged them tip to tail. Then I've done exactly the same thing on the other side, forming the vector parallelogram. And then the resultant goes from bottom to top. And then you measure the length and get 17.5 centimetres, and that gives you a resultant of 1750 newtons once you convert them. And if these two strings provide a resultant upwards of 1750, that must mean the weight force is going to be 1750 downwards. And that gives us our value.